So this is an update video on ADSI or Analog Display Services Interface and it's something that I made a video about a while ago um, specifically about a phone like this. I have a few different Nortel 350s here and so the one that I did the video on last time was this phone here and I think I came to the conclusion that uh, uh, something might not have been quite right with that, so um, I ended up getting a couple different Nortel 350s. So I also have this one here, and um, it was originally manufactured by Nortel, although uh, they all have um, there there were several different brand name, brand names that uh, were were used. Um, as phone companies marketed them to consumers in the late 90s, early 2000s. So these two are U.S. West, and this one is a Bell Canada phone. Um, and I think U.S. West is the most common. This is the U.S. West home receptionist phone it's often known as. And of course, there are also other models that support ADSI, but this is probably the most commonly known about one. And um, the update here is that I have actually finally been able to fix the problems with Asterisk that were causing ADSI not to work. There was a regression in the code back in 2014 that completely broke it, essentially. And I've only just fixed it now after doing quite a bit of testing and uh, looking at uh, what had changed. And so now it actually uh, works and is usable. So that's really what this demonstration is about. It's just a basic demo of seeing it actually working as opposed to just uh, an overview of what it is. So I have this ADS iPhone plugged in, obviously. Um, the screen does need power to operate. Uh, the phone itself will obviously work without separate power. Um, but the screen does require the external power. And I have this connected to my lineman's test set here, which will come in handy in a second. And then I have that connected to this port on this, uh, this is actually a 12 pair breakout connected to that uh, channel bank right there. And so that is connected to this master system, which is actually uh, sitting right here. So what we can do here is go off hook. This is the speaker phone. And if I dial extension 5, it will call the get CPE ID application and asterisk. And you will see what happens. All right, so that is the end of its uh, little duet there. So if I press pound, it will basically hang up. And so um, so that that was about maybe 10 seconds there. I wasn't counting, but uh, you might have been wondering, okay, what's, what's going on there exactly? So what is essentially happening is that this telephone is doing a data exchange with the server which in this case is asterisk. And the way that the protocol works, which I won't go into too much detail here, is it's very similar to call waiting caller ID, or off a of caller ID, or type two caller ID, whatever you want to call it, where the telephone switch will send a CAS, a CPE alerting signal. So that's the little burst you might recall hearing after the call waiting tone. So the call waiting tone is for humans, it's not for machines. Machines like this will listen for the CAS, which typically follows the SAS. And once it gets that, it will basically go into data mode. It will mute the talk path so you don't hear the data transmission. And recall waiting caller ID, it's just a very brief data burst, which you might have heard before. But for ADSI, it's a more complicated back and forth data exchange. And downstream from the server to the phone, it is using 1200 baud FSK, just like call waiting caller ID. And in the reverse direction, upstream back to the server, it is using DTMF. 
just like the acknowledgement. So the phone is talking DTMF to the server. The server is sending 1200 baud data to the phone. So um, basically the server will send it information that will show up here. And when you press one of the buttons or if it's doing something internally, it will communicate that all via DTMF. So essentially the responses are not designed to be high bandwidth um, because you're not going to be sending a lot of data from the phone but you can receive a lot of data, at least 1200 baud, at, um, uh, to the phone. So that was a little look at what the user experience was. The test here is just basically asterisk trying to figure out what type of telephone is connected and what kind of CPE it is. And um, I can do it again and um, We'll see what happens here. Let me just, that was the last call there. Let me get rid of that. And if I dial five. So we'll see that it is called get CPID and it's detected that it is in fact an ADSI compatible CPE via the DTMF acknowledgement. And so it got the CPE ID. So that is the CPID. And now Asterisk knows that this phone has five lines, 20 columns and six buttons. And this is actually sent from the server to the phone. The phone is not producing this text. This is all sent via 1200 baud FSK from the server to the phone. And it's working pretty well. Sometimes you might get a character garbled, but um, in this case, the server is right there. It's not even going over the internet. So it's actually pretty good. And it just shows the information. You can press pound to exit the test and that will just up there. So it might not seem like a lot is going on, but it's actually a pretty complicated dance. So I'll do it again here, but what I'll do is I'll enable DTMF logging to the console so you can see exactly what the phone is sending in response. So you can see that there is the acknowledgement and there's actually quite a bit of data that is, this is all stuff that the phone is sending to the server. Um, in terms of DTMF digits, you can see that, in fact, it's setting its data via DTMF. And that's the end of the test there. You can see it says press pound to exit. But um, as far as, um, so I believe D is used in the middle to, um, to basically act what it gets. And then if it's trying to send data, I'll just send it. Um, it's like here you see that it's 2006. Um, and, and so forth. So this is all sent via via DTMF to the server. Now, what I can also do, um, I think I've held the call there. Let me actually hang up. What um, I will do here is put this lineman's test set into monitor mode. And so if I were to go off hook, um, you can actually hear that on there. So I'll hang up now. All right, and I'll do it um, carefully because if I do that, there's a lot of feedback. So I'm just gonna try to put the handset somewhere else. Uh, and if I dial five, now this will let you hear both sides of the uh, call actually. So let me just get rid of that for a second. So while the phone is doing its data exchange, you notice that you don't hear a lot and that's intentional because you wouldn't want to hear it. That, that's, that's by design. But it's actually kind of neat to, to hear what's going on behind the scenes. So that's uh, what I'll do here. So that's the end there. You'll notice that it finished with a B DTMF digit. If I press pound, and now that's that's the end of that. So I'll hang up. So again, the 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 bursts you hear, you can probably recognize that's the FSK that's being sent from the server. And uh, some of them are longer than others uh, because again, it, it does have to fill the screen with the information that it's sending at various points. 
So I'll do it again, but leave this on the screen so you can see how that corresponds to the data transmission. All right, and that's the end there. And again, I can, I could just hang up. I don't actually know why it says press pound exit, but um, that's certainly something you can do. All right, and I'm gonna turn the test set off before I hang up, or otherwise I'll get a ton of feedback into the speaker. So that's really all I wanted to show here. Um, the main hurdle to doing all of this was actually fixing the regression that kind of broke everything. And now that it is actually fixed, I'm looking forward to doing some, some more development with this. What you can do is, and there used to be more of these, and I think they're kind of all gone now, but there were different services, um, obviously commercial services, you know, where you can call your bank and, um, you know, check your balance and do different things. There were different services set up. Um, you know, 20 years ago when these were commonly being used compared to today. And, um, but there were different services, um, specifically that allow you to program the phones essentially so you could have different things show up when the phone is idle. So this actually works when the phone is on hook too, not just during a call, which is pretty neat. Um, obviously you would need to do that, um, in this case, um, you would need to do that with something like Chandadi and Asterisk where you're you know, physically connected to the, the switch. Um, although ADSI itself and Asterisk is not Dottie specific. It works on any channel technology. And um, so if, if you're interested in doing this, I think the hardest part is actually getting a phone that supports ADSI. These are not extremely common. It's this series of phones and a few related series um, under different Nortel, um, Astra, there's a, a few different uh, names essentially. Um, there's the 350, the 390, and the, the 390 and the 480 I think are the most common ones. Um, but uh, looking forward to future things, um, I think what I'd like to do is get a service set up where you can program your phone. Um, essentially, online you can fill out what you want it to do, and then this is uh, stuff that used to exist, that um, you could essentially put what you wanted, and then you could call a number that they provided, and it would program your phone for you. So that, that was kind of neat. And there's obviously a lot of possibilities with this, so this is really just the beginning here. But, um, I don't think uh, anyone has really been using this functionality recently, especially given that it's been broken for eight years and nobody really cared about it. But uh, I do think it's pretty neat. ADSI is, I think, one of the more interesting analog technologies. So if you are interested, hopefully there will be more of this coming soon.